Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my message right here in the car. Um, Wow, I don't know where to begin. So what I usually do is I let people sleep the first few days, first maybe one to two days, sometimes homeless people and people that have been through so much. It's just so nice to catch up on sleep and if you've had a child involved, you know, you just need to rest for a while. So I've done that. Um, wow, I don't even know where to begin here. I, I'm so distraught. When, when people come to the property, there at uh, some way at the at the mission house SLE mission house this is a sober living environment this is a place where people are not allowed to use illegal drugs or alcohol right on the tree right in the very front it says this place is protected by video surveillance and it's under video surveillance and I've got cameras up everywhere and so I have here my my big screen right here it's actually a, it's a tablet I mean it's not a tablet it's an iPad sorry I got so many wires here but I, I, I put it right up there and it hangs down and I can observe it while I'm driving along. I have my headset on and I even use my phone. And almost every time I've observed, day or night, I've been so disturbed that you're sleeping. Very, very disturbed. So I started asking questions. And then I started reviewing videos as we stopped at a hotel. And uh, one of the questions I asked was, when they, wa when they eat or use a dish and make it dirty, do they clean it up after themselves? Are they following, you know, these basic rules of humanity and they're posted, but they're just common sense things. They're things that civilized cultures do. And uh, the answer was no, they're not. So I reviewed some videos and I, I was really surprised and shocked that that's actually what was happening is there's dishes being made dirty and not being cleaned up. Okay, the next thing is I asked, well, so-and-so was supposed to be working at this time. I arranged for him to work two hours. And uh, I asked, did he? And the answer came back, no. So I reviewed the video and I saw, I saw you sleeping, brother. I know you're tired, but in in I I'm not able to sleep when I have responsibilities. Um, so I, I kind of want to know. I'd like to get a call from you, and want, I'd like you to explain to me what your purpose is there, because I I thought it was you needed a place. I had a, an apartment a friend of mine owns in Butte County, and I have houses and other places. I thought that you needed a place to stay, and you wanted an apartment, or maybe you wanted a job. At this point, I could not refer you to work somewhere and I couldn't refer you to an apartment because, and I don't even know where to begin. I'm, I'm without words. Please help me out here. Please call me and explain to me what's going on. Um, I would really appreciate that. And at this moment, at least for now, I cannot accept you being there in the house. And uh, the main reason is because I've watched your child run around there without any supervision. And the child is trying to wake you up. And I asked someone to wake you up and they couldn't wake you up. And so well, there is a mandate reporter there that actually called their friend who is part of the Sober Living Environment programs in Butte County and they said to call the sheriff and see if they could wake you up. And I said, no, I'm gonna post a video. I'm gonna hear from them. I wanna hear their side of the story before anything else. You know, because I know we've all gone through hard times. And, and you said that you were a former Adventist or an Adventist. And you know, I, I know people sometimes don't go to church. Sometimes they change their ways. Um, they don't follow all the specific beliefs or lifestyle principles as Adventists, but, and they've had difficult experiences. I don't want you to have a difficult experience with us. I want you to have a memorable, a loving, kind, sweet, you know, experience. Um, anyway, the thing is, is we are full. We don't have any room, but I allowed you in a common area, which is we are open from eight in the morning till 
eight in the evening and that's a common area and I've had to actually restrict some customers from even coming in and certain health lectures from not happening so you could get sleep so I'm actually um, the, the business is actually being hindered and harmed and also I've got pictures of tobacco and cigarettes out in the common area in a classroom where these things are highly highly prohibited and highly um, you know talked against so Anyway, um, help me out, explain to me where you're at, and then we'll go from there. Um, but at this time, y you, you have no authorization to be there, and I'm so sorry. If you can explain to me and come back under different circumstances with an understanding that uh, you have to work two hours to be there, 24 hours, you have to clean up after yourself, things like that. There's a few basic principles that have to be followed. I'm assuming you have a lot of other options and other places to go and other things um, to do and, and that's great. Please, please go do those things. Um, I mean, I assume that because if you, well, when people run out of options, usually they're more respectful and I think you have a lot of options because the level of Let's just put it this way. It's brought tears to my eyes and to my mother's eyes. And we're just really, really saddened, really saddened by, by what we've seen. So please call me, 530-353-5561. 530-353-5561. If you don't want to call, it's okay. Um, we love you. And you're welcome under the right circumstances. But at this time... You cannot be there. Thank you so much and God bless. Bye-bye.